grace and peace be multiplied unto all of you, my father's children. Good morning. This is an amazing day that the Lord has allowed us to see, for this is the day that he has made, and our responsibility is to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so grateful that you allowed us to come into your homes this morning to share the word of God with you as we continue in our series entitled Help from Habakkuk. I'm so grateful and I pray that this message today, which is the second installment of these series of sermons, will bless you. Come on wherever you are, grab your Bibles in your hand. I want to read the passage to you this morning and then we'll pray and we'll see what God has to say. Continuing in our series entitled Help from Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 1, beginning there at verse number 5. This morning I read from the Holman Christian Standard Version of the Bible, which may read slightly different from the King James Version, but uh, it'll help you understand the Word of God a little bit better. I read it this way. My Bible reads it this way, beginning at verse 5. Look at the nations and observe. Be utterly astounded, for something is taking place in your days that you will not believe when you hear it. Look, I'm raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter, impetuous nation that marches across the earth to open spaces to seize territories not its own. They are fierce and terrifying. Their views of justice and sovereignty stem from themselves. Their horses are swifter than lepers and more fierce than wolves of the night. Their horsemen charge ahead and their horsemen come from distant lands. They fly like an eagle swooping to devour and all of them come to do violence. And their faces are set in determination. They gather prisoners like sand. They mock kings and rulers are a choke to them, and they laugh at every fortress, build siege ramps to capture it. Verse 11, then they sweep like the wind, pass through, and they are guilty because their strength is their God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's pray. God, how we thank and praise you again for who you are and what you've done. God, we admit that you've been better to us than we could possibly be to our own selves. So my prayer this morning, God, is that you would do what you have always done. That is to hide me behind your cross, cover me with your blood. Do it now, in the name of Jesus, that your people do not see me but the you that is in me. Hide me behind your cross. Cover us again with all of your precious blood. For it's in the mighty and precious and powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. From the second installment of these series of sermons from the series Help from a Back, I want to preach from the subject this morning, Accepting God's Answer. Accepting God's Answer. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, growing up, the theme in my home, whenever me and my siblings wanted to do something, first thing that came to our mind was to go to our father and ask him. My father, growing up, was considered the more understanding parent of the household. But although my father was the most understanding parent, does not mean that everything went through him. He's the man of the house, does not mean everything went through him my father. That's a theme in the African-American household with most men who do not want any contention or strife or problems with their wife. When the kids run to the father and ask them, it's an answer that he gives and now that I have children of my own, I give the same answer too. Ask your mama. Ask your mama. What's your mama say? Ask 
See if it's okay with your mama. And that was the theme in our household growing up. Whenever we went to our father wanting something, wanting to go somewhere, wanting some money, wanting to hang out, wanting to go to a party, we would go to our father because he was the most understanding but never failed. My father would just tell us, ask your mother. And Deacon Williams, I remember on one occasion going to my father because I wanted to hang out with some friends past curfew. My father didn't fail. He said, go ask your mama. When asked my mother, and to my surprise, although my grades were good, although my conduct had been excellent in the home, although my chores were already done, my mother looked at me and said, no. I was upset about this for the rest of the afternoon, didn't understand why mother was being so unfair, didn't understand why my mother gave me what I considered at the time a negative response. But my father seen me in my room. My disposition had dropped. I was upset. He could tell in my facial expressions that something was wrong. And when I told him that my mother gave me a no answer, my father looked at me and says, well, you have to accept your mother's answer. This taught me a very valuable lesson that in life, none of us, not even God's preachers, will get everything that they want. And in life, we have to accept the answers that we are given. Child of God, such is the case in the life of our friend, Brother Habakkuk. He has started this conversation with God, and now he is forced in verses 5 through 11 to hear the response of God. He, he is forced to sit back and listen to what God has to say. And child of God, Habakkuk must accept God's answer, although it could be something he doesn't want to hear. For many of us, God has already showed us certain people, certain places, and certain opportunities in our life that is not for us. And all we have to do is accept God's answer. I, I mean, God already told you that he wasn't no good. You know he don't got a job. He ain't looking for one. He sit up on your couch all day, eat all of your food, play video games. And God has already given you your answer. God has already said that that job was not for you. I know they're offering more money. And I know you see it seems as if it's a great opportunity. But at the end of the day, God has already given you your answer. At the end of the day, I know that you want to be around certain people because of what they have. And you claim being around them will encourage you to build your life up and go towards a ladder of success. But at the end of the day, child of God, God has already given you your answer. And I got a question that I want to raise for everyone that that may be watching this morning, where would we all be if we just accepted God's answer? I know you weren't ready for me this morning, but I'm coming around the corner. I'm talking to you who's watching right now. Where would you be now? What opportunities could you have had? What type of job would you really work? How much money would you really have in the bank? What relationship would you be in now if we just accepted God's answers. How much of a better parent could you have been if you would have accepted God's answer? Where would you be spiritually now if you just would have accepted God's answer? And I ain't even in my sermon, but for the 72 of you that may be watching, I just want to tell you this morning, if you're going to live your life for Jesus, if you're going to move forward with God, you have to learn how to accept the answer that God gives. Oh. Here it is, friends. In Habakkuk chapter 1, 
Habakkuk uh, chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 uh, as we discussed on last week it, it is Habakkuk's uh, uh, decision to have this conversation with God and Habakkuk goes to God and says listen your people are falling into idol worship they have no respect for the word of God and Habakkuk raises the question God what are you going to do well, I'm glad you asked Habakkuk because in verse 5, God begins to talk back to our friend, Brother Habakkuk. And what God has to say is something that Habakkuk is not going to like. I got two points I want to share with you quickly. And I promise you, Mount Olive, I'll be out of your way. If we are going to accept God's answers, verses 5 through 11 really only gives us two points. And number one is this. If we're going to accept God's answer, we have to pay attention to the process. Verses 5 and 6 teach us that God moves and acts to prove that his process is valid. And he does this in verse 5 by telling Habakkuk to be prepared to observe something that he probably won't even believe. God knows that his process is not our process. So he warns brother Habakkuk that what he is about to do will not make sense to him. It's interesting, friends, because I believe this is something that many of us would love for God to do for us. We would love for God to send us some type of warning to alert us that what he's about to do in our lives will not make sense to us. It is a wonderful warning, child of God, if God would let us know every time he was about to move that what he was about to do did not make sense. But before we shout too soon, this, this warning that God is giving Habakkuk, God isn't giving him a warning as a heads up. He is showing Habakkuk that how he operates is different than how Habakkuk would operate. And Habakkuk has no choice but to be okay with God's decisions. It is interesting, friends, uh, that the reason that God in verse number five is somewhat giving Habakkuk this warning uh, is not to give Habakkuk a heads up, uh, but it's to really tell him and show him and prove to him that he operates on his own time and the way he operates will be different from the way Habakkuk would operate. I got Bible to back me up, child of God. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 8, the 8th portion says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. As high as the heaven is from the earth is as high as my thoughts and ways versus your thoughts and ways. In other words, friends, what we have to understand when we are accepting God's answer that we have to pay attention to God's process and God's process is different from ours I know you think you would be better if mama was still here if daddy was still here if you didn't have to go through anything but you gotta understand that God moves by his own process and his thoughts are not our thoughts and God is telling Habakkuk what you you're about to see is going to be something you won't believe because I move different than you move. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All I'm trying to suggest, child of God, uh, that what many of us as believers need to understand is that if we are going to truly accept God's answer, we must understand that God does not move how we move. He is a sovereign God. He is a holy God. You can't tell him what to do, and he does not move by what you think. He can do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it, and whenever he wants to do it. God is not your cosmic bellhop. He does not pull up and ask you right away Hey, sir, do you want me to do this? Can I take your coat? But you got to understand that the God that we serve is holy all by himself. And he can do whatever he wants to do. Right. Amen. Amen. So, in the midst of this conversation, God gives this 
this warning not to give Habakkuk a heads up, but to assure him that your way of thinking is highly different from my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Friends, this particular process is something that God has done before, uh, which is he will allow people, or should I say his people, to be conquered in order to be reconnected with them. God is going, I'm in the text, to raise up, King James Version says, the Chaldeans, which, which, is, which is actually uh, the Babylonians. He's going to raise them up which means it's not that the Babylonians didn't want to conquer Judah on their own. It's that God allowed it to happen. You ain't following me. I, I'm in I'm in Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 5, but more specifically, I'm in verse number 6. This is what the Bible says. He says, I'm raising up the Chaldeans, the Babylonians. What, what God is saying here is that he's, he's raising up these Babylonians, hear this, to go against his chosen people. And this is in response to what Habakkuk is asking God in verses 1 through 4. He, he begins the conversation by telling God what God's chosen people are not doing. God, they ain't reading their Bible. God, they're idol worshiping. God, they ain't paying their tithes. God, they ain't treating nobody right. God, they got corrupted leaders. And God begins to talk back to Habakkuk and says, okay, if you want to know my plans, let me just tell you, sit down, Habakkuk listen, kick your feet up. He says what I'm going to do is raise up the Babylonians. And Habakkuk says, hold up God. The Babylonians are even worse than your chosen people. God, you ain't got to make that decision. God, you ain't got to do all of that. God, God you ain't got to take it that far. God, you ain't got to turn the corner so quickly. And God says, oh no, you wanted to know. Sit down and listen. God takes over the conversation, and he says, I'm raising up the Babylonians, and the reason I'm raising them up, Habakkuk, you need to understand, I'm not raising the Babylonians up because the Babylonians could not conquer my chosen people on their own. You got to understand, at this moment in time, the Babylonians are stronger, they're mightier, they're fiercer, they're, they're, they, they have reason to want to take over the land. And matter of fact, they do not have the heart of God in the first place. They, they're a more rambunctious crowd of individuals. And God tells Habakkuk, it's not that they could not conquer you guys or my chosen people on their own, but you got to understand Habakkuk I'm allowing them to do it this is interesting friends because the question should be raised Deacon Williams why would God allow this to happen he raises up that Babylonians, and if you've ever read through the Old Testament, you already know that the Babylonians conquered God's chosen people, which led them to being exiled and ultimately led God's chosen people to be in captivity. What this passage is telling us, friends, is that there are moments in life where God will allow individuals to be raised up over us so that we can reconnect with him intimately. All I'm trying to say, sick child of God, why you wondering why people on your job who work less than you get the promotion and you don't, it could be that God is raising some people up over you so you can reconnect with him intimately. That's the reason they're talking about you. That's the reason you can't seem to move forward is because sometimes it ain't what God will just, it, it is what God will allow to happen. They're less talented than 
you. They have less money than you. They don't have the connects that you have. But he won't allow people to be raised up over you to get you to reconnect with him. I, I know this ain't a shouting part, but can I just pause here to give me and you something to shout about? What we have to understand, the goodness of God will not only allow grace, but sometimes the goodness of God will allow punishment to lead us to where we need to be with him. Aren't you glad that sometimes God allows stuff to happen? He allowed it not to go through. He allowed the situation to go bad because he knew that the most important thing was his relationship with you. Oh, God. He, he allowed the Babylonians to conquer his people. And he's giving Habakkuk the plan. And he says, this is what I'm going to do. He says, uh, he says, have, I'm, I'm going to allow it to happen. What's funny is that when God is giving this response, I'm almost done. Uh, when he's giving his response, he not only tells Habakkuk, that he's going to raise up the Babylonians or the Chaldeans if you have the King James Version. He doesn't only say that. Uh, he starts giving uh, a, a description of the Babylonians. I'm in verses 6 and 7. Uh, God not only knows who he wants to use to take his people captive, he also knows why he wants to use them. Because he knows the character of the Babylonians. I'm, I'm, in verse, I'm in verse number six. Here's what the Bible says. I'm raising up the Chaldeans. Uh, my Bible says he calls them bitter and impetuous nation that marches across the earth, open spaces to seize territories that are not their own. Here's what verse 7 says. They are fierce and terrifying. Their views of justice and sovereignty stem from themselves. Your body may say that they are, in verse 6 and 7, they are hasty. Um, or your Bible may say that they are bitter. Or, or your Bible may say that they are quick. I, I want to just break that down just for a few moments. Uh, when he says they are hasty, uh, what God is saying about the characteristics of the Babylonians is that they move quickly. Or, or in the Hebrew, it, it's the word picture of flowing water. Which literally, what God is literally saying, they move quickly. The Babylonians have the same type of zeal that God expected his people to have for him. Here, here, here I come. Here I come, child of God. What God is actually saying, he says, I'm using the Babylonians because although their efforts are for evil, their zeal is a zeal that you should have for me. Might I suggest, child of God, the reason that God will use your enemy to be raised up over you is because sometimes there is a lesson that even we can learn from our enemies. And the lesson here that God is telling Habakkuk, because these Babylonians are quick and because they move and because they are so quick to do their deeds, that's the same type of effort and zeal that I expect from my people, but I expect them to move quickly for me. It is interesting, friends, mm -hmm. that if we're going to accept God's answer, we have to pay attention to the process. And the process here is that God is going to use the Babylonians, and he is raising them up on purpose to conquer his chosen people. But in verses 7 through 11, God just gives a long description about these Babylonians. If we're going to accept God's answer, number one, we've got to pay attention to the process. But number two, secondly and lastly, we just got to listen and wait. I know, I know, I know, I know that ain't deep for some of you super theologians. But, but if you're going to accept God's answer, sometimes all you can do is listen and wait. Let me see, can I find some good news in all of this? Because verses 7 through 11, Deacon Williams, it just allows us to know that these Babylonians are fierce and these Babylonians don't care about what we care about. They, they, they love violence and their faces are set for determination. They, they love taking pride.
prisoners and they mock the kings that God has allowed to be over his people. They sweep like the wind when they come in through and their horses are faster than leopards. That's all we know. These verses, verses 7 through 11, I can only imagine if God was telling me this in a conversation. These verses are terrifying. God is now exploring the attributes of the Babylonians, and he explains that everything about the Babylonians is fierce. But if there is fear in what God says, there has to also be joy in what God does not say. Habakkuk has to listen to God's response, but he also has to be mindful to what God's response does not include. God's response does not include that he doesn't love his chosen people. Might I suggest, child of God, when you accept God's answer, not only should you pay attention to what God is saying, but you have to find some sense of solace in what God has not said. Yes, he said his people were going to be conquered, but he never said he didn't love them. And all I'm trying to tell you, child of God, be thankful for what God did not take away. Be thankful for the relationship he did not let you destroy. Be thankful for the money that he did not let you throw away. And sometimes in life, child of God, when we accept God's answer, the greatest answer that God gives us is not what he says, but it's what God does not say. He did not say he wasn't going to save you. He did not say he did not love you. He did not say he was not going to pick you up. And the good news this morning, I'm going to see, can I find Jesus in Habakkuk chapter 1? I ain't worried about what God did say. I'm worried about what he did not say. Because thanks be to God, even when my sins and your sins put his only begotten son on the cross, he never said that he did not love us. I know you sitting there in the comfort of your home, but do me one favor, slap your neighbor, don't hit him too hard, but just slap somebody and just tell somebody real quick, you gotta learn to accept God's answer. That's all I got. I'm, 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 I'm done. But might, might, I, might I suggest, wherever you are in life currently, right now, it may not be where you want to be. You may not get those things in which you want to receive. But you have to learn how to accept God's answer. His answer is a process of his own thoughts for our lives. And sometimes, friends, you just got to listen and wait. But while you are crying over the punishment in which God is telling you about, find joy in what God does not say. Because that will lead you closer to him. God bless you. God keep you. Here's our prayer. As of right now, friends, I pray that this series is blessing you. We want to extend the invitation for all those who may be watching us, whether you're at home, on your job, in your car. We want to extend the invitation. Maybe you need more help accepting God's answer. I want to tell you this morning, child of God, regardless of who you are or where you are, this place of worship, this place we call church, this place that we know is Mount Olive, is the place where growth happens. We want to invite you in. If you're watching today and you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, will you please type it in the comments. If you already are saved and you just need a place to worship, we would love to invite you into our family so you can become family with us. Might I suggest, friend, if you are watching now and you just need prayer, type it in the comments. Someone from our team will get in touch with you as soon as possible. We just want to pray for you. I pray that every day after this will be a day that you accept God's answer. Every day is a good day. Some days are just better than others. Amen. That's good morning, Mount Olive. Here are your announcements for Sunday, January 17th, 2021. Please like, 
share, and subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter pages. Help from Habakkuk. We will be studying this series throughout the month of January. Growth 2021 is the year of self-accountability. The question is, what can we do better to serve God? Please continue to call and check in on our sick and shut-in members and our bereaved families. These are your announcements for Sunday, January 17, 2021. Have a blessed day.